probably he could well be aiming at his caddy's feet or just to the left of his caddy's right foot somewhere between caddy and caddy and hole caddy's a good line yep if that's enough speed that's all right oh that's lovely power. lovely touch 66 if that's conceded 66 it is a genuine 66 there from price heavy to hold this to halve in four and for the morning round to finish all square pretty good really Sevy was three down after four holes he was three down at the turn won the tenth and the eleventh gradually nibbled away at Price's lead now up the hill I fancy just right of centre inside the hole I, if he if he gets it, a good speed on it oh he's putted well today he's got a nice rhythm body still head still all square so well it's been a, an exciting morning's golf but a, you know, they needn't have bothered to go out they could have started this afternoon level Excellent day's golf, and that uh, shows that's last birdie, the white figure of Ballester. That was a, a given three at the 15th, and if he'd missed that, they were both round in 66. On um, paper, it'll go down to Seve 65, and a cracking morning's play. That graceful, elegant Seve yeah, swing. Yeah, you can look at that all day. Alex. And slow motion here, a three iron shot. Now the hands are quite low and that induces a good wrist action quite early into the backswing. You notice that we get to, if we could just hold at the top of the swing, just look at that. The full 90 degree turn, a lovely left leg movement in, permitted by a left heel slight lift and it's perfectly poised. The shaft is aiming towards the green, slightly left of it because he's going to cut across the ball, remember? Now, as he starts down, you'll watch the transfer of weight here. It really is superb. The hands drop, as we call, inside. He never gets out across the ball. Just leads the blade of the ball slightly open, so the ball starts to leave him going away to the right. Then he arches through the spine. That's what I like about Seve. He holds his position, his head still above the shot. And look how high. I've never seen anyone quite so high and elegant with the hands. You know, people must think I've had an affair with this guy, but I think he's one of the finest swingers of the golf club I've ever seen. And when he's on form, as he is today, I don't think he's, uh, he's catchable, really. Brief look into the afternoon, and how important is it that, that Seve, he's won the title four times, he's never lost a, a world match play final. Is that an important element for this afternoon? Yes, I suppose as the years go by, he's trying to create records before he runs out of time, and I think he's desperate to win this one, to, to catch Gary Player, you know. Then he'll go after open championship records. But, you know, he'd love to be the man that won, uh, that nobody's won more world match play championships. Because we saw at the Ryder Cup, he is one of the great match players. He's one of the great strategists. He almost gets to gamesmanship, if you want to call it that. But he's, he doesn't like to lose. OK, Alan. Can the marshals now hold all the traffic and spectators, please? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a continuation of the final of the 1991 Toyota World Match Play Championship between Seviano Ballesteros of Spain and Nick Price of Zimbabwe. The state of the match is all square and Seviano Ballesteros has the honour. On the tee, please, <clears throat> Seviano Ballesteros. Ballesteros' opening tee shot just drifting off. On the off. tee, Nick Price.
And Nick Price, who has been demonstrating this one-armed practice swing all morning, a definite hitter of the, the, the ball with his right hand. Ballesteros off to the right of that uh, camera tower. The referee for this match is Mike Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, please may I remind you Referee Mike Stewart for this match. Mike Stewart, of course, from the PGA European Tour, whose headquarters are here. Bruce? So let's have a look at this morning's form. And the figures in white are holes one. Mostly, it must be said, with birdies. And both players round in an approximate 66. Well, certainly Price was round in 66. And so he might have been... 65 if you give him that three at the 15th where in fact he wasn't required to putt from about a dozen feet so certainly the very best golf of the entire world match play has been played this morning and everybody of course looking forward to a very exciting afternoon and there you see the old Wentworth clubhouse it's uh, the logo on the club tie and uh, due for an enormous refurbishment over the coming months just the beginning of january all the planning permissions came in a few days ago and they're going to be spending the next year knocking it about keep the facade but a tremendous amount of work going on behind in total something approaching 12 million pounds to be spent here at wentworth new leisure centers and i suppose for the first time ever since it was created it's now got sufficient financial resources to turn it into what it's always had the potential to be which is one of the uh, the finest country clubs certainly in britain if not in the world now there's a a view looking back from behind this green at this opening hole 471 yards a good opening par four certainly one of the toughest holes on the course even if it wasn't being the, the first hole that the golfers play. It started life as a par five, but reduced to a par four when they remeasured it and discovered it was under 475 yards, well within reach of these two golfers. Sevy a little bit off the left-hand side as we look back, his right. This morning, Savvy hit quite a lot of left to right tee shots on purpose. Uh, this one, he uh, was clearly trying to hit left to right, slightly overdid it. He's caught the rough on the right, and uh, although the ball's lying well, he's left himself a very long shot, almost 260 yards to the pin, and uh, that is a flat-out shot. This uh, hole playing a little bit longer today, the light breeze into the player's uh, face. And uh, Savvy, some 40 yards or so short of his opponent, and uh, this really puts him at quite a disadvantage unless he gets a real flyer out of that rough. Just a little. Thank you. So, Savvy, with the big wood out here. He's going to do very well indeed to get up to the pin. I think if he hits a good one, he might just get the front edge or front apron, but uh, it's a very long way. Well, he's made a wonderful strike. And there he goes, just hauling his way up under the front edge of the green. Marvellous shot there. Well, congratulations, Clive, on a very fine read of the distance Sevy had to go. You said he might, if a really good one, might just get him to the front edge, and that's exactly what happened. And it'll be interesting to see how the, the form of this uh, match takes, play, takes place this morning. It was very much Price who went off very quickly, got three up, and then was slowly reeled in over the back nine. Two, 220 to the, to the flag here, a one iron. Wind slightly right to left. Made a good contact with that, and that's going straight, just right of the flag, but it should, oh, it's kicked right, which is a little unlucky, that shouldn't, that shouldn't normally have done that, but it's coming back to pin high, excellent shot.
And Nick Price has uh, perhaps been the most, he's looked the most relaxed the mo with his game most together of all the players this week. Very little uh, fiddling and fussing about. He's been very much at peace with his game and it's shown. Nick Price winding into the backswing and it really is a very coordinated swing. It's a solid swing. It's a hard one. There are no frills. There's no nonsense. Look at the top of that swing. It's just superb. A little bit of left heel. I like that. But a massive shoulder turn well beyond 90 degrees, more, more 100. And now as he starts down, you'll see how the hands drop to get close to the right side, as close to the hip as they can do drives through. It's a classic swing. It's perhaps a little hard for the average amateur golfer. They need a little bit more tempo and timing, which they will see in Ballesteros rather than the hardness of this one. But as far as a no-nonsense swing, you won't see a better one. Although everybody's been full of uh, praise for this golf course and the condition it's in couldn't be improved upon, the scoring hasn't been as good this year as in previous years. It's playing its full length, which now is a not very intimidating seven, uh, 6,900 something yards. There's how this first hole is performed during the championship. Only two birdies and 14 drop shots and the second hardest hole according to the statistics, 4.3 over its uh, power of four. But you couldn't wish for a better day on which to play golf, as both Clive and Michael have been saying. It's, it's very chilly, and perhaps one of the coldest world match plays there's been. And as well as a soft course, that also means the course will play that much longer because a cold golf ball does not travel as far as a warm one. Tiras to putt first, and he'd settle for two putts from here. You don't start going for things early in a round of golf, even though you've already played one round in the morning. Nice steady start. Mind you, had a steady start this morning and found himself three down. Beautiful judgment of pace, which uh, Seve showed all morning. Good length, good line. And when he was required to hold out, he never made a mistake of any sort. And that was really one of the secrets of his success in the early when he was winning tournaments at the beginning of the year. He decided to putt well again. Now, Price has had a couple of victories this year. Canadian Open on, and the Byron Nelson Classic in the United States plays all his golf now in America and seems in spite of not winning a couple of Opens when he had the chance to be getting still getting better at the age of 34 the belief in his own ability growing just to win the hole there you are. We could ask that gentleman to drop that. Thank you very much. This for a half. And, well, should be a formality the way he's cut it today and this week. Right bang in the middle. And off they start with a very handsome pair of fours. Full halves in four. 
Match remains all square. And on to the second, which isn't a long walk, just uh, 15 or 16 steps from the back of this opening green here on the west course. 155 yards, and the pin today, again, only seven paces on the front of the green, and four in from the left, which is, well, I don't know. That's I'm too old-fashioned. I think that's just a bit silly, rather like the one at the 13th. I haven't seen the flag back right this week, where they used to put it when the tree was uh, on that side of the green, was half again as big as it is now, which is, uh, if we come back and have a look there's the f there's the flag which is really perched just on the front of the green and you've got to be very fortunate or miss hit one to get anywhere near that you used to stick the pin back right over the top of the bunker when the tree on the right hand side which was really blasted when the gales came through and a bit of uh, dry rot or wet rot now Sevi. Iron, and it's is it one they're applauding? Uh, is it just in that little ah there he is, he's just held on, not far from the hole. Took the risk. Perhaps intimidated by Seve's ball being only six or seven paces away from the hole, but he's in there. Very out of character shot that from uh, Mr. Price. Worse than being in the bunk, he's actually plugged in his own uh, pitch mark as well. So to really get out of here and, and make a three is uh, going to be very difficult indeed. He won't be able to get any backspin out of the bunker because uh, you have to take a lot of sand with this kind of shot and. Uh, that imparts topspin on the ball, and he won't be able to stop it. So Seve is definitely favourite at this hole. Yes, and if he does take four, and Seve gets a three, it will be the first time today that anyone has genuinely won or lost a hole to a par. The 15th this morning we gave Seve a three, but in fact he was... 15 or 16 feet away in two. Well, that's not bad play to go 20 holes. Well, we don't know what he's going to do yet. Young Master Price may well conjure up a bit of magic. He's got a little bit of green between him and the top of the bunker, but as Mike Houston was saying, a, a buried ball is just a, a bit of hit and hope. You use all your, the skills you have, stab it out, but he's got to get it up onto the green, and then it's in the lap of the gods. There you see, not too inviting, is it? A coddled egg, or a thing you coddle eggs in. Now, he's not wasting much time. It's almost sort of, well, a hit and hope. He knows it. Now, it won't see much follow-through, I don't fancy. Ah, that's it. Fizzes. Oh, pitched in the bank on the other side, and that was a little bit of good fortune. But he was annoyed with the tee shot there. That was really a, not a good tee shot. You see the break of the wrist. This is really the best you can do is get out. All these fellows can get out of these situations. Wrists broken very quickly. Look at the length of backswing again. Perhaps a little bit longer than uh, most bunker shots. And the hands lead down. And you try and keep the club head going down into the sand. Down, 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 down. One of the great exponents of this was Chichi Rodriguez. And you see, just stuns it. You shock the ball up and out. 
I know it's very painful to be told by people like me and your club professional that getting out of bunkers is easy, but if you actually think about it and can practice it, I know only seven clubs in the world, or certainly in Europe, have any bunker practice facilities. It doesn't take too long to learn to get out of bunkers. And if you can, your handicap comes tumbling down. Price is third, then. A very good try. Best he can do is four, and I suspect he'll see at least one shot from Sevi. I reckon from this distance, if Ballesteros had been on the green, Price would have conceded, but just the difference between... See, he's not far from the hole, but he's got to go that four feet or so over the fringe of the green, cut a bit like a, a reasonably... Uh, good domestic lawn onto the finely cut prepared surface so Seve has now just to roll it up to the whole side that looks a good speed falls away a bit is it conceded yes it is and for the first time Ballesteros goes into the lead first time all day he's actually been ahead in this match Well, the players make their way down the slope to the 30. There's the, the diagram of it at 452 yards. Used in the old days to be a par 5. It really demands a very hard second shot because as you pass that bunker, 232 yards to the front of it, about 260 to clear it. But then it's all uphill to the green and on the green, uh, no fewer than three tiers. There's the green as we look down on it, and you can see for yourselves the pin is on the top level of the three. Eight or nine feet in height, just something like the front of this tee you're looking at. Uh, three putting commonplace. Mr. John Webb just passing by there in front of the camera, one of the officials today. It all foreshortens uh, the bunker on the right, as I said. You need a 260 yarder to go over the top of it. The ideal line is the one on the left of the green. It's a long, long way away, but it's a good marker. Savvy with his driver, there's one with a straight face. Mm. That's good. He set it off up the left side, and there's much more room up there than appears. And that's a beauty. Billy, Billy Foster, the caddy. A good pairing. Oh, Nick Price. I would have expected him, strangely enough, to aim a little more to the right. To Yes, he is. He's squaring up now, isn't he? <coughs> and out into the rough. He's past the bunker and uh, wide of it indeed. And there it appears to be sitting up quite well. It'll leave a very long shot, probably a long iron. I don't think they'll need wooden clubs, but that remains to be seen. gives you an idea of how it sweeps up the slope beautifully manicured fairway and the pin that couldn't be more central in the back level a little group of people you see to the right of the fairways you look back that's where Ballesteros's ball and the cluster in the rough on the left that's price there's the statistics that show you that uh, at 4.34 it 
really is a hard hole. And had only four birdies, and you think the cream of the golfing world has gone through here, sometimes twice a day, and only four birdies have emerged from this hole. Nothing worse than a than a one over par. I think, uh, Peter, you must remember those days when the when the opening of Wentworth was five three five five. Remember that? I certainly do. And of course, the big change, the first big change, came about here when this World Match Play Championship arrived in 1964. And it was about 65 66. They discovered that. Uh, the, the success was so great of the event because we had Palmer, Nicholas, Player, the great players of the day coming here. And the pathway from this green to the next tee was only some 10 or 15 feet wide, which was enough for the members to go through. And suddenly they had uh, all the people in the world, 20,000 spectators descended on this course. And of course there was nowhere to put them. And that hasn't changed an awful lot. You still struggle to put 25,000 people around this course today because of the... Uh, the quality and the, and the uh, construction of the course with the trees so close to the fairway, but they cut a load of rhododendrons away. Just to the left of this third green was a huge bank of rhododendrons, which I visited a couple of times during my playing career. But uh, all in all, it's uh, been softened a little bit, of course, with the clubs and balls being better and sending the ball further. But it's a, it's a stiff opening now, uh, Alex, for... 4-3-4, four, four, and if you make the next hole a 4, it's a generous 5, really, when the wind isn't against. It's be one of the stiffest opening stretches in uh, British golf. Well, there's how uh, Nick Price has, has played it. <laughs> he's had, all, he's had all, nearly all of the birdies that we saw recorded. So there you are. It's his favourite. But he's coming in... Uh, from the wrong side. He actually had a putt this morning of no less than 40 feet across steps, up hills, and uh, he got that. In fact, he had an outward 31 this morning, which is without doubt uh, the best, the best by two shots of anyone who's performed this week. And at that stage, he held a very comfortable lead. Three up he was, and then Seve launched back with two birdies, and suddenly things changed. And now, finally, we have, for the first time, in this uh, final, Nick Price is trailing. Now, can he get up here with this iron club? The ball's sitting not bad. It looks like a three iron. Just look how tight he grips it. Once he goes, he hits it very fast. Uh, there's a bank at the back, and... Uh, the ball's gone through to that, I hope. Well, can't see it yet, but he must be quite close to the feet of the spectators. Marvellous shot there by Nick Price. He's just ended up punt very nearly at the pin and ended up at the bottom of the hill behind the, behind exactly behind the pin. Seve, a drive of almost 270 yards, just under 200 yards to go, and plenty of green to cover. He sets it off left, and I don't think he's got enough fade. Oh, he's got a good bounce here. <laughs> well, that's not a bad side to come in. There's uh, not much to save you if we go right. A large pot bunker sits over there, but uh, quite a generous bank over on the left, and uh, Seve used all of it. Right up here behind the green, as Mike Houston was saying, the ball must be, I think, just out of our view, but down there somewhere close to the spectators. And uh, Ballesteros' ball, although almost pin high, because of the way the green has been designed, I think you can see a stripe running across it, the slope, and Seve's left himself a very awkward chip. See him pulling his polar neck uh, away from his from his neck there, trying to get a bit of air, a bit of ventilation. He's been rather unfit this week. The cold and uh, a bit of a gout, he said. That's rather strange. He used to put that down to port, but I know Savi doesn't drink anything that's alcoholic. So he tells us anyway. There's the ball, just a yard off the green, and it has to come up that slope. I it's going to demand a little chip and run, there's no question. He can't throw it all the way up there.
Warm applause for Price first. And few of us will forget the battle between he and Ballesteros in the Open Championship at Royal Lytham. And in fact, uh, he was very unlucky not to uh, beat Tom Watson uh, to, to claim the title at Troon. I think it was 1982 at Troon, Royal Troon. That's where he finished. And although this green has been down for a year or two now, it just still looks new. You see the, the fringes where the machinery cuts it. It looks just a little bit stressed out. He'll have to decide just where to drop it, where it takes its first bounce. That's the tough part of these shots. And it looks to me as if it's going to be Seve to play first. Although he's further away from the pin. He's further away from the pin as I see it from this angle. But he might have the easier shot. Now, he's consulting with Mike Stewart. Could be something to do with the new irrigation uh, pipes that have gone in. Clive, I think this, the viewers at home can see the line that uh, Mike Stewart is pointing out there. It runs in a rim around the green where they installed the system, the irrigation system. Savvy uh, feels that his ball sort of set into the, the trough. And he's going to have, it uh, looks like, relief within one club length. <laughs> yes, he could use a driver. Of course, that's the longest one he has at about 42 inches. He's a yard's enough. Get him away from that little hollow. I don't think it'll go... Oh, well, it didn't. I thought it was going to... I was going to say it won't go nearer the hole. I thought it would come back into the valley, but it just went down dead. The ground quite soft at this point there's the little step he just came up that he that he's making him choose the putter rather than a pitching club he wants to keep the ball low as it hits that uh, bank Talking of irrigation, it really has made a tremendous difference to Wentworth and to other courses that are near and dear to me, certainly that in a year, two and a half years of terrible drought, suddenly courses are able to be produced of a standard befitting these players. It doesn't make it unfair at all, it doesn't take it away from being natural, there's nothing wrong with giving a thirsty, thirsty grass a little drink of water now and again. step that was the step it just climbed it's not bad really not great he will not be uh, absolutely thrilled with it well Nick Price has been unlucky the ball started to come back down the hill but uh, the longer grass held it up here pro I think those was who are the, the amateur golfers would normally get the old putter out and find that the most useful one, but he's got his sharpest wedge he can find. He's just going to nick it down onto the uh, edge of the green and let it run down. It's going to go slightly left to right. It's going to be quite quick down there on this on this green. Alex was saying it uh, hasn't settled down that well. Uh, he didn't hit it quite far enough. He needed to hit it another yard and it would have moved on, but was a difficult shot but uh, Seve's got a long putt as well so anything could happen but uh, Seve's got a long putt as well so anything could happen here yes a man who's made more birdies at this hole than any other player this week but of course you see coming from semi rough as he did with his iron shot no chance of gripping the ball. Let's have a look at this little lofted sand iron club that he has. Hands right down to the bottom, onto the shaft, in fact. All he was trying to do was keep the body still and just almost 
back and forward, firm wristed, firm armed, let the loft of the club, which is about 60 degrees, talk to the ball. But even right at this moment, he knows he'd made a mistake. It had to make it to the fringe of the green. The slope up to the green was soft ground, just killed the ball stone dead. That's the slope there that stopped it, and now onto the green. And the break will be the same, as Mike said, from left to right. He's in danger of a losing consecutive hole. Away from him, you see, there's the slope. Might still be his turn. Sometimes cameras flatten greens, and you think, my goodness, that was an awful putt. But the slope is greater than you can see. Savvy won't be rushing. Savvy's good at playing against quick players. He just plays a wee bit slower than normal. Great tactician in the game of match play. Well, Price has got a hold this. I or Savvy won't have to putt, I'm sure. Good putt. It's five. <coughs> Savvy has to now work. Canadian champion, Canadian Open champion. In fact, two victories on that side of the Atlantic this year. A long, lean spell he had. And Ballesteros couldn't believe his luck getting, uh, winning the short second hole with, with a par three. And now, with a four, he might take this one. Well, he will take this one if he gets it. <coughs> Ought to be a, a little bit of break on it. He doesn't seem to be allowing much. You would imagine it would go from right to left. Green that one, and he gets the four, and he gains another win, and he's two up. I love the way that he gets his hands so low down towards his thighs there. The right forefinger always separated from the others. It doesn't look like a comfortable grip, but he keeps the wrists rather still. He almost works the forearms back and forward. Just look at that. The forearms come out to, to the right, and there's not much hand action at all. Almost stationary there back and forward, it glides the ball away and lets the hill do the rest. Beautiful still position. And there is the situation now as they make their way through quite a long walk to the par five fold. Ballesteros, who had not been up in this match until two holes ago, he won the second with the par three, now the third with the par four, and has a two hole advantage. So on to the fourth, and for the first time really this, uh, this week, a rather un untidy passage of play for Nick Price. Good four at the first, but then two bad iron shots at two and three. There's the, the fourth downhill, par five, and you can drive right down to the bottom with, or with as little as a three would, and then a view from behind the green. There's the pin cut front left again. The players can get on this green very easily in two, but they're going to have to risk a few things if they're going to end up putting the ball close to that target, really hidden behind the big bunker that guards the front left-hand side of the big slope from right to left. Now a blind tee shot, That's, they can't see much more than that. The line is almost level with the outside branches of that uh, the left-hand tree sort of between that and the little little sort of spiky tree uh, at the top of the the, the, the watch of trees at the far end there three wood all that required the bias steerus he really caught one with the driver he could run out of fairway and into the ditch what? 
he's let that go a bit to the right. And down the right hand settles down. Might be pushed to get up in two from there. Depends if he can get a chaser. That's uh, the one wood, the driver for Price. Perhaps on balance, not quite as long as Biasteris. <laughs> now, a little bit of a test for the next hole or two, if he can get his game back under control. It's, that's a very good shot, and that's position A. As far to the right as you can get, gets you the best look at the green. As we, it's a, quite a sharp dog leg, but from here he goes down across the valley, across that ditch. Of course, it doesn't come into place, so not for the second shot. And then there's another ridge of rough short of the green again but it'll be only about a four on maybe three on second shot for these players to the green there and then of course the contours will bring the ball down towards the pin if they can fl uh, fly it in fairly close to that uh, to that big bunker now of course we there's the third place playoff taking place for those who are the two players who were beaten yesterday Billy Andrade versus Nick Faldo and as you can see, Faldo, maybe against the expectations of, uh, of uh, those that know about these things, winning that. He's three up at the turn, out in 33 to Andrade's 36. Andrade all enthusiasm and sort of cultish joy for the game. Faldo giving all the appearance of being really rather fed up with the game. But he's played very well going out, apart from a slight blemish at the second where he conceded the hole. And he had four threes in a row from the fifth to go from all square to three up. So they only play one round, the third place playoff. And here's how this hole is played, and mass of birdies, as you can see, 25, three eagles. And uh, along with the 18th in uh, second place, that was also 4.3 against the power of five. The second easiest hole on the course, 12th being the easiest. They come down the hill in cold, hard winters with a touch of snow on the ground. Very fine, very fine tobogganing slope, this one. Savvy has left himself a very long second shot here. He's some uh, 50 yards or so behind Nick Price. He's got uh, 240 yards to go to the pin, and... Uh, the pin is way over on the left behind a bunker. Now, it, uh, from this position, Seve's going to have to go way right of the pin towards the right half of the green and hope the slope of the green will bring it round into the left, which it does on this hole. But uh, in terms of making a three, it looks very difficult indeed. I mean, a four normally is good enough on this hole, but his opponent has a big advantage here. He's also playing off the turf, his opponent, so uh, that'll give him a bit more grip. He can fire at the pin if he wants to. Savvy at 240. I think we'll see him hit a chasing shot with a long iron. It, uh, it might be a wood, but uh, I think the long iron might be favourite. But a difficult shot. He could have been to Dent have been another 30 yards or so further down this hole, and uh, it, it's a big help if you're on the turf. Really gave that a glow and that pitched a little bit unfortunately right into the face of the uh, the second grassy bank short. He really had to have a go at that to try and get it up and running, as Clive was saying. 
because it was lying down a bit but it and in fact if it had pitched a, a yard or two over that that bank it would have been perfect feeling his back a bit I think after that not surprisingly but he was uh, well it was his own problem because he'd uh, pushed his tee shot and now he's really struggling for a four an opportunity for Price to get back As I say he's played a little untidily Nick Price is, uh, as Clive was saying, quite a long way further on. In fact, he's only got 172 of the front. And uh, pin today tucked in the left, only 13 on from the front, and it's a difficult pin position, but with only 180 odd yards to go, it's a lot easier shot, and probably down the wind a bit. It might even be as little as a six iron for Nick Price on this par five. Certainly an opening for him now after Sevy's a uh, little unfortunate bounce there. Just got over that ridge and ended up in the semi-rough. Well, this is, is a six iron. Oh, we've got that very heavy and pushed it right. It's very close to the bunker. Oh, it just jumps it and spins back onto the green. But uh, really a very poor shot from there. But he's still got an advantage over Seve. And that's the third shot this afternoon that he's mishit the drive at the set third and the two irons at uh, two and four there one of the uh, the disadvantages Sevy had here apart from the bad lie is the fact that the ground is sloping away from him in other words he's running out of resistance to hit against his left side that's why we will see what what occurs when he gets into the through swing here he goes into the normal beautiful turn because as Clive said he's gonna have to chase this ball it's a long way to carry the stream and now all the power goes in as he starts down into the through swing bang and then suddenly there's no ground to resist to see his left hip is starting to slide his right side comes flashing through and there's the right foot has to go down the hill otherwise he'd had a total loss of balance and it was quite an athletic shot altogether and he really did well unlucky to kick onto the upslope of the face of the the ditch but it was a very brave shot to take on his tee shot just left him far too much to do really So, Seve by no means out of this hole, coming over the bunker, but uh, he's so good at these shots, I think we'll see him play a relatively long backswing and keep it slow, sliding the club under the ball. But interesting, I think if Seve had been on the green, we might have seen Nick Price play at the pin there, but uh, with uh, Seve uh, in danger of perhaps not making a four, uh, Nick took the safer route and didn't quite catch his second shot properly. So there's uh, Sevy's performance here, three birdies and two pars. He's struggling for a birdie here. And I must say it's nice, one thing that the final of the world match play offers us each year, the afternoon round, is an opportunity to see those holes at Wentworth which uh, we're not normally able to show during the 72 hole medals, the PGA Championship and the like. And, uh, very pretty course it is. It's two sort of slightly different characteristics. It tends to go this end, the eastern end of the course, is almost sort of parkland-like with grass and trees. And you go out around sort of 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 round there, it becomes more heathland-like the nearer it gets to Sunningdale, which of course is only about three miles away. so good about that is, is it, he could see so little all he'd see was a sort of thin slither of green lot of sand and uh, very little green to work with and he plays an exquisite shot it, visually it would have been such a difficult shot but he always is able to put that all away think of the distance he's got to hit the ball and what a good shot now look at now how about that for the performance of Nick Price on this hill six birdies and an eagle he really has played. That's why he's not been down in any of his games, clearly, as he started so well on this course. Remember, he'd had three birdies out of five attempts at the, uh, at the third. And even better here. 
However, he's down at the moment. Couple down. And it's often quite difficult when you've been playing a certain style of golf and winning your matches in much the same way that to, to sort of adjust to being down if you haven't been before. But he's got an opportunity. We've well, got uh, a little bit of a one to maybe get a four. Just started that seems to be gathering pace, just drifts away to the right. It's a good putt, it's a very good putt. With, uh, 18 yards downhill, and only just started it rolling. This Toyota World Match Play final, all square at lunch. Seve had won the second, the third, and the fifth to go three up in pursuit of his fifth World Match Play title. Wonderful scoring throughout the day. Well, they halved the sixth and they halved the seventh. And this now is Seve's second to the par 4 8th. And a slight misjudgment, which Seve knows. Get up. Get up. Oh, shot. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. And a very difficult spot for Seve to get down in two from there. So, Nick Price looking for any little bit of hope. Three down. Here's his second to the eighth. And as you'll hear, he likes it. Go in. Wonderful shot, and Price would hold that putt for a three, his first win of the afternoon, and the match very much alive. Nick Price now two down after eight. Now, at the ninth, Price pulled his tee shot toward the trees. He chipped out. This is his third shot into the ninth Bounce green. Break right. Break right off that. A great shot, but the advantage was with Biasteras, whose tee shot was in the center of the fairway. So this, the current situation, Seve Biasteras two up, and they're playing the ninth. And our commentary team is Alex Hay, Bruce Critchley, and Peter Alice. Well, Biasteras, who uh, hit a beautiful iron shot to the ninth, uh, just missed the putt for a birdie three, got a four. Nick Price just failing. It was a very poor tee shot coming off that lovely birdie that he got at the eighth. How sad for him to drop a shot and the hole's beginning to run out. Now he is uh, three down and they have just gone through the turn. Nine holes left to play. Oh, well, he's blaming the putter, but really and truly he had to hack it from the, the, the birch trees on the left of the fairway to the fairway. And although the third shot was great, it put a lot of strain on the putt. And they walk through the trees about 40, 50 yards to the 10th tee, which runs back in the opposite direction to the 9th to this. And it's a shorter 186 yards to a pear-shaped green set again at an angle and a steep bank down on the right-hand side. Here's a view from behind. And over the top of the pin, there's quite a steep bank, maybe six or seven feet in height. And there's another bank on the other side of the green running. About. So this is rather like the green is sort of cut into a hillside. And, uh, well, I think almost you had there the case of Price. He was his poor play at the night, having got his first hole back for some dozen or so holes since he last won one, which was the uh, 12th this morning. And just the pressure that this man has been exerting on him. He's played the last 18 holes, the last nine this morning, and the first nine this afternoon, and an approximate 64, 65. So, uh, you can't get much finer than that. And deserves his three up. He's in fact, of those 18 holes, he's won nine of them, lost a couple of them. But he has played very well. And when you consider he started this, the second and third nines, he was three down and uh, reeling, in a sense, from Price's outward 31 this morning. A tremendous response. So very much in the driving seat. And only a five iron.
That'll do very nicely, and that's the sort of golf he's been playing. He's got better and better over the last three days. I say it got better. He was 68 in, in the first rounds of both his matches on days two and three, of having had a bye, or as a seed, whereas Nick Price has come the whole way. done very little wrong but uh, just made the two or three mistakes second third and ninth and that really responsible for the fact he's gone from all square at lunch to three and three down now Let that one go. Also a five iron. Oh, it's crept up. It's crept up. They cut back a couple of trees that used to overhang this green, and uh, you're hitting a longer iron as the amateurs would do. They really uh, couldn't find a way through with the pin where it is today. So this is how the the front nine has been played this afternoon. And there you are. And that guy stares out in 33. No argument there. And Price, as he drops shots, they're not birdies, those white figures, they just holds one, but drop shots at two and three, which let Sevy get away. And then he had that beautiful conceded two at the fifth. Price flickering briefly at the eighth with the three, but then really giving it all away with off the tee at the next. The excitement of winning a hole and perhaps getting back and uh, on his own admission he was a little too quick and again be interested probably just price to putt first and another of those great match play situation as Sevy comes onto the green and gets the round of applause he's been doing for several holes now and that uh, keeps him going as well but I think uh, Price is going to have to find a few birdies from somewhere to get back in his match he's not going to be given the opportunity so he's very good at sitting on top of his man once he gets there, matching him shot for shot. I like two boats tacking against one another. He's got a head and he's just going to sit there unless Price can break out from underneath. And very psychologically very difficult to, to do. He's an intimidating man to play. Price must be feeling that he only has to appear on the golf course with... Seve for to bring out the very best in him. Last time they shared the links was at uh, Lytham. Seve produced the best round of 65 to win the Open of 1988. Tis Ayasteras to putt first, and Mrs. B out supporting the old man. Golfer herself, she was due to play in the Pro Am, but. Uh, when the weather was little inclement on Wednesday. First opportunity then for Sevy and he'll be he'll know the importance of popping this in he doesn't want to give his man any quarter whatsoever he knows and probably one or two others know and Price might know that if it comes to the crunch he's not as as lethal as he used to be he can waver the old mental scar tissues there then he'd like to shut this game out by as big a margin as he possibly can 
little break from left to right. Tack that round pretty straight. So only a three, but he has putted very well, very soundly. And of course, he he expects, and almost everybody else now expects him to roll anything in from 20 feet downwards. So, well, half chance here for Price. Across. He's got to have a go at them. He can't leave them short. Halves are no good now. And he's got to take the risk. <laughs> and these get harder and harder as the day goes on. There's not much joy in knocking this in. There's only the, the penalty of losing another hole. Should he miss? well but still three down eight to play and the sands of time are running out across to the 11th which uh, isn't so far away the tee and 376 yards round the corner right to left this tee is almost shared with the eighth tee which goes in to the direction there's sort of loop at the end of the course here at uh, Wentworth on the west course there's the flag and again they've stuck it right on the front corner only eight steps on the green really have found the corners on one or two of these holes today this <laughs> second shot is played uphill you the players will see that you'll just about see the flag and maybe 18 inches of flag pole you can be tempted to try and draw your tee shot round the corner but uh, you shouldn't be tempted because if you tweak it too much the bank on the left is quite heathery thick heather but you've got to go really between that bunker on the right and the trees on the left is the ideal line Tabby smashed one away to the right yesterday and he's on a similar line today not as far as yesterday just in the light bit of uh, semi-rough I must say he looks very relaxed there he is to the left of that right hand bunker in the distance just up towards that little line of spectators crisp contact yeah, it just comes off the bank into good spot it's not a not far to go to the green from there and news of the third place playoff which has uh, just finished in victory for Nick Fowler over Billy Andrade. Nick Fowler winning five and three and Fowler really taking command of that match in a stretch from the fifth when he won three consecutive holes and forty five thousand pounds for third place and that's how they scored and uh, their three consecutive threes five six and seven was where Faldo took command of that match but a super tournament from Billy Andrade he knocked out the defending champion Ian Woosnam in the quarterfinal he knocked out Tom Pertzer in the first round he takes fourth place and third place and 45,000 pounds goes to Nick Faldo a 
America with a little bit of uh, furniture equipment and this sort of for those of uh, normal size and stature sometimes to get on the old stool to look over the big ones at the front remember great John Blackwell always used to come to this tournament sadly John you're missed if you're lo looking in John Blackwell one of the great characters in the world of golf he always used to bring a little set of step ladders he used to carry on like a decorator's aluminium ladders and they used to perch himself behind the greens and climb up and have a look over the top Henry Longhurst and I used to creep round to his estate car around where, the, where towards where the uh, tennis courts are now and the boot used to be opened and there used to be all sorts of lovely game pies and bits of smoked salmon and pink fish and stuff like that which went down a treat 17 different makes of sherry it was all right eight birdies so far here incidentally I was talking about Uchi yesterday you remember that I said it was cold well uh, John Weeks the father of one of our excellent cameramen here and a Sussex man says it's Sussex dialect from the uh, Ashdown area but n a word not used in the posher villages so goodness knows the derivation of Uchi you wait till I see our camellia tomorrow down in our paper shop now then Sevi, the ball above his feet not so easy no that uh, isn't really working in his favour but uh, he's only got a relatively short shot 135 yards uh, the pin well forward but this a very large green and uh, having such a large target to play at it's uh, almost inevitable that uh, Sevi will make a four or better so really the uh, pressure tumbles back onto Price who really has to make a three to stand any chance of winning the hole. Very interesting, these little books the caddies have. Yeah. They have all sorts of little diagrams and uh, showing huh? where on certain holes from this point it's so many paces to the front of the green. And so many steps to that bunker or from that bunker or from that crooked tree to the centre of the green. Levy's decided it's a whatever. Nine iron, seven iron, nine iron it is. Flag on the front of the green. I think Sevy aiming for a front middle. Lovely, easy swing if he's controlled the club head. Seems to have controlled the club head rather nicely. From down below, you can't see the green, so but the applause will tell him that he's close. And so, as Clive was saying, uh, enormous pressure on uh, Price because he, again, won't know how close that ball is. It's just pitching wedge. the slope to the green. Now they'll see where the balls are finished. One of the things they say about standing below the ball is that the ball will be pulled to the left and that is the case if you should lose balance but if you watch Ballesteros how he emphasizes the balance aspect of this shot because he's played straight at it he's unwritten all of the books he's keeping beautifully still goes into perfect shoulder turn nice plane of swing and it is now as he comes through he's not hurrying the swing you can almost see as he looks at his head position how still stationary balanced he's maintained it and so there is no loss of balance at all and he was able to fire it dead straight at it 
Yes, I think a great key, Alex, is playing uh, shots like that is not to try and hit the ball too hard. I think most, on most occasions, people try and hit too hard or under club. Take a bigger club and swing smoothly and gently and slowly. And usually the ball will go straight. That's the same to be said when playing in a strong wind. I always remember John Jacob saying, don't try and hit it harder, try and hit it better. Swing smoothly, keep your balance, just try and sweep the ball away. Looking at our score sheet, Seve's had four twos today out of, what, seven goes. And that's a, a great help, four twos. Shows you the accuracy of his tee shots and good holding out. Uh, Price would be a good blow for him if you could get his putt in. But you see, he's got the more difficult putt coming down the hill, left to right. Fraction too hard. If that had been just a little less speed, that could well have just toppled in. I think Sevy conceded uh, the putt there, so now clear the decks and I've got this putt to go four up. it a bit too much right it was inside the hole so both of them could look at that and say well if only if only but it was halved and Sebi remains three up just seven holes left to play Here's the 12th, it's a par 5, it's 483 yards, and as you can see, it's a slight dog leg. In front of the, the tee there, where you see the little streams and things uh, making a fancy pattern, there are four trees, they're about 75 feet tall, and the players are, are committed to going up and over the top there. That, in the early days of the strong winds, was uh, a bit of a punishment. Many went soaring up there, and then the ball was blown away. There's no way that you can go underneath them, not by intent anyway. And that tall tree there, the one just to the left and of Sevi, that's that is the line. If you can soar it over the top, fortunately it has never grown any higher. Perhaps it was pruned early on in its career. It stayed at that nice level. And the ideal shot is uh, over that with a touch of draw. Not too much or you can't see the green for the second shot. <coughs> Again, just a little bit of movement that he didn't want to see and a rethink. Yeah. See the height he gave that one. And I think it's good. Normally when they bend down to pick the tee up quickly, there's no real worry. And I think he is within, I wouldn't think any more than a three iron shot from the green, just the par five. He lost his hole this morning, having birded 10 and 11. He came on here full of beans, he was catching up, his three hole deficit was uh, back to one, and then he took five, he bunkered the second shot. Price has decided to practice swing with two arms now, instead of one.
down the right, but he, he favours a, a draw shot. He may have swung it in the air. Yes, I think you can see it. It swung all the way around to the left-hand side. And although he's on the fairway, he may have some overhanging branches up uh, 50 yards or so short of the green. And there's the branches I'm talking about. There they are, and a little water hazard there. Up onto the green. And the pin position 16 yards or 16 paces up the green and in the center. I must admit that Ballester has generated a mass of power. It's worth watching here. You see there's a lovely Varden grip. It's a perfect example of grip. Good posture, but watch the wind of the body now. Watch the shoulders building a mass of power. My goodness, the arc of the swing in such play. Just beautifully down the line of the shaft, an arm, and he draws it down and through, and it's like Seve of old, and right through to the finish. You wonder how the shaft of the club can stand it. Nick Price, a contrast. You can see again the Varden grip. It's lovely to see that. I hate to see poor grips. And he really has got a, a tremendous pressure on his fingers. Look at the thumb there. It's almost crushed. And now he winds as well. He winds actually further than Seve in the backswing. You'll see a change of direction in the shaft and the arms. From this point, it goes down and loops back. Can you see that? It's starting to lay itself off, as they call that, aiming to the left. But he drives hard close to his right side clears a beautiful gap by getting the left hip out of the way and then through and there's the extended right arm that's where he does all that one arm practice to extend through width and strength drive the ball away from you two very good shots contrast and swing little squeaky the caddy American caddy who he brought over the one who caddied in the US PGA championship for the John Daly who stood in for a price Nick Price was about to become a father, took a little bit of a break, and Squeaky got the job with John Daly. And what a wonderful job he did there with him. Must be a heavy bag, that is making his head rattle back and forward. They, they, they do carry some equipment, these professionals. So Price up the left-hand side. Uh, he may have a few branches in his way. We'll find that in a minute. He's actually outdriven Sevy, I believe. Well, this hasn't been the greatest of holes for Seve through the week. Uh, the last two days, he was in the trees on the left from the tee. Uh, this morning, he hit a good drive, but then hit a rather faulty second shot, caught it a bit sort of thin and out of the heel and squirted into the right-hand bunker, made no contact at all. Well, Nick Price about 10 yards ahead of Seve. He has got some branches from the left-hand trees uh, to consider, but in fact he clattered into them yesterday, And uh, but there isn't any wind here this afternoon, and it'll be a lot easier. Alex was saying probably a three-iron for Seve. Well, I think it's probably going to be that for Seve, and something similar, maybe a four-iron for Nick Price. Well, if those branches interfere just a bit with Price, they must surely do the same with Ballesteros, and it may mean, uh, there they are, you see, they're just fringing out, they're just a bit of silver birch, and they seem to be leaning further and farther to hamper the player. I think Sevi might bring it in with a bit of a draw from right to left. Well, he's starting to lean as if the draw is not taking effect. Uh, he, he played for it and it didn't come off. I mean, it is a par five. He is pin high. He is only 15 yards from the hole. But he's not too pleased about it. There he goes picturing the plane of the swing. Why did I get across the ball? Now, Price. That gloved hand of his, he, he takes a foot, and there's the practice swing, the one arm one. He grips the left hand as if it were a vice. And then if you watch his right hand, you'll see all the fiddling and twiddling. He's got a, a real finger grip. Look at the right forefinger, the trigger finger. It's a way down. He'll go very quickly. Now, will he bring it back? Get close. He's, he's drawing it. He's got it. Well, he's certainly not giving up the fight, is he? 
Canadian Open champion. He seemed quite content about it. Off they go to caddy, the good caddy, cleaning the blade of the club before it goes back in. Nothing worse than pulling the club out and finding that the, the mud is dried into the grooves. And it is a hole that many can get up in two. That is the reason why we see uh, no fewer than 24 birdies. Uh, only one eagle three, I think that was Nick Fowler, if my memory serves me right. And then the par 17, only one shot dropped over par all week. The average under four and a half, and that's the way it plays. Stroke index 16. So there's not too many get a shot at this hole. how Ballesteros has played the hole. No eagles, as I said, I think it was Faldo, I may be wrong, but the one birdie, pars, and of course he took a par this morning, a par five, which cost him the hole. He was in the bunker on the right, so many go into the bunker there, but he's able to putt this one. Years uh, of play in the South African circuit, then across to the European circuit. He, he was a very good competitor in our circuit for many years, a, a decade ago. Then he took himself off to America, and I suppose because he got an early win, he won the World Series practically right away. I would think that's what tempted him to make his home in America. And uh, he had then quite a lean spell as far as tournament winnings are concerned. He did well across on this side, nearly winning our championship. But this year, two victories, and the one in the Canadian, of course, the Canadian Open. That is a prestigious event where the field is of the highest quality. So his confidence brought him here for this championship, and he hasn't disappointed anyone. And I've just been informed that it was uh, Colin Montgomery who got the Eagle Three, and... Uh, so I do beg his pardon, he was playing against Faldo. Now, Nick Price, there is how he has played the hole. He's uh, five birds. He's well under the average of the par. Now, Ballesteros for a three. Nice judgment of speed. Considerably left of the hole is the marker coming out. He can afford to give butts, but I'm not sure the, his opponent can. <coughs> Tending to a pitch mark there. This 12th green really nestled into the corner in the trees. Always difficult to keep a green in condition when you can't get air at it. You almost envy the head greenkeepers of Lynxland courses as opposed to those with forest lined. Now, this putt for an eagle. Three. Should bring the match back to two. Nicely struck. Oh, I never turned. Never turned. Half each, or pick up and go, or both putt. Actually, no one would expect to be given a putt of that length. It's a good two and a half feet. There's an awful lot of money at stake. Second prize, 90,000 pounds. First prize, 60,000 more than that. A lot at stake. Now, 
nice birdie four keeping up excellent scoring he was out this afternoon in 33 shots and now goes one under par coming back so that's the equivalent of three under par for the round so far and that price is conceded and off they go to the 13th so back into familiar <coughs> sorry familiar territory the last six holes running all the way back more or less in a straight line to the clubber the 18th is a quite an acute dogleg round to the right. In fact, most of the holes are dogleg one way or another. This one certainly is. 15th goes the other way, 16th back to the left again, 17th to the left and 18th to the right. And it's certainly a feature of these Heathland courses. We were saying earlier how the sort of the bits around the clubhouse up the other end, the east end, is, uh, is uh, more parklandish grass, just grass without the heather. Here's the heather end, the Heathland, true Heathland type as the last one's across. Hopefully gallop on their way. There's a pair of step ladders, probably getting a bit heavy after 36 holes or 30 holes. But the game very much in Seve's own hands now. He's dominated certainly the last uh, 18 holes or so. He's called the tunes. A bit left if it stays on that line, but if it comes back, it'll be ideal. Yeah. Touch a fade on that, and well, that's as far left as you want to be to get a clear view of the pin. The pin, remember, front right. Funny sort of position, particularly when you've got a quite a severe slope up to the pin or up to the green. Difficult to get close. got a much better view of what he's got left to do and the crowd's not fading away at this moment they're still hoping for some sparkling golf from price of course they're uh, they'd love a really close finish maybe even extra holes so they're at this point willing nick price to have win a couple of holes even though i suspect the the uh, the weight of desire for winning is uh, with bias terrace now, there's uh, Seve's statistics, particularly with a particular attention to this week. He's fifth in the Sony World Rankings. There are his three victories, which all came in the early part of the season. The first one in Japan was, we just sort of heard it, this side of the world. Seve's won again, and he hadn't done so for two or three years. And then came back and showed his new form in the PGA and the British Masters. And... Uh, then he had a sort of quietish period in the middle of the year, but then once again, at, uh, in the last few weeks, he's played some really good golf. Of course, the highlight of which was four and a half points out of five in the Ryder Cup. And I think that is a sort of launching pad with which he's put himself in a great frame of mind for this World Match Play Championship. Fifteen times. This is the 16th appearance he's made. He's won it on four occasions. It'll be five if he wins this to match Gary Player. And Gary, in fact, played 20 times in the world match play, so he's got a few more goes to, to, to have a go at before he matches that. But that's not a bad record. Now, it's Nick Price eating the apple this time. Those of you watching this morning, it was Seve who was munching away, got one going, got a bit of apple going the wrong way, was about to choke and did so at the top of Nick Price's backswing. Offered him a replay, which of course I think even Seve would have known he couldn't have uh, been entitled to, but at the end when Nick Price had a six or seven footer, Seve said, well, go on, I'll give you a half. He said, no, no, fair's fair. And Price duly holed out, which I think was good from everybody's point of view. But maybe... Uh, it's a funny thing to do, reminiscent of this morning. And, of course, these players, particularly when they're out in medal play competitions, taking anything up to five, five and a half hours to go round, 
they do take food with them. So often they're not go they don't go out immediately after breakfast and get in in time for lunch. So they take bananas and energy giving things. Carbohydrates more than uh, more than apples. So. So not much to choose between those two, but if you had the choice, you'd take uh, Nick Price's line in. Nick Price, as Bruce was saying, in the ideal position here, he's only 137 yards from the front of this green, and the pin, as we've seen this morning, is only cut on six, tucked in next to this bunker on the right-hand side here, and. Uh, Interesting thing about setting up golf courses is your most, most courses are set up with six hard holes and six medium holes and six easy holes. Well, I describe these as six as six very severe, six severe and uh, six hard. I mean, they really are very hard positions, but that's normally how the golf courses are set up. This will only be an eight iron for Nick Price into a slight breeze. Sun shining now down on us, which is very pleasant and certainly warming the soul a bit. It's been a bitterly cold day most of this day. Players trying to wear it, some of them wearing gloves, try, trying to keep their hands warm. Well, they may make very Great good contact time. with that. Uh, it's a good shot, it's just to the right pin high, it's a good shot indeed. A good chance for a birdie which he desperately needs. No chance for Seve to reply. Both balls well driven on this fairway. Driving statistics this afternoon. Nick Price has uh, only missed two fairways, but missed one very badly. Seve has missed four fairways this afternoon, but uh, he's always managed really to get away with it. He's been in a short semi-rough, and in fairness, only just off the fairway each time. So Seve just over 140 yards and a 7-0. So that off to the right, but no damage there. He carries the bunker and uh, still got a shot, but coming downhill. Really, from uh, that shorter distance, that is not a, a good shot and a touch lucky. That only just got over the bunker. And really, the golf this afternoon, whilst it's been good, it hasn't been as sparkling as this morning. The price out in 31 and Sevy home in, well, an approximate 31, 32 depending on whether he'd have held the putt at 15. But Seve so far has done enough to get into a winning position, and but it was Price who really let the thing go immediately after lunch with a couple of wayward shots. And there's the statistics of Nick Price, 34 years of age, bang on six foot, world ranking 27, but I think that's... Uh, on the way up because he's currently lying sixth in the uh, United States PGA Tour with something approaching three quarters of a million dollars this year already. He's been here twice before and not done very much but the general opinion is that he's still improving, he's still, his belief in himself is building and uh, even though he's missed a good, a couple of good opportunities to win the Open Championship and a major may not be beyond him because at this level it's not really about golfing ability it's about belief in yourself and strength of mind and desire now here's something for you the ball is in the way of Valder so even though he's off the green he's entitled to have it marked uh, by a steerus rather Fearing with this shot. On the putting surface, the player is entitled to mark it himself because he's in charge of the ball, but it was in Seve's way. Now, this isn't as easy as it looks. He's got quite a lot of roughish ground to come over. He's coming downhill, and it's downhill most of the way to the pin, certainly two thirds of the length of the shot and he'll be looking to 
just get a little bit of backspin on this to check it. But I would expect you to pitch about, well, something between the edge of the green, about a yard on it. Sort of like that. Sort of like that. Makes the exquisite look commonplace. Very easy, really, just do that, but uh, it does require... Well, it's a result of years of practice. So let's have another little butchers at this. It really is pitching wedge, head, you see, just like a putt. Keep everything very still, head never moves. And there the club goes along the round, the ball pops up. You just use the shape of the head to, to get the loft. You don't try and hike it up with the hands. As I say, it's just like a, a longish putt. So no joy in that for Master Price. Now, of course, he's got he's on the the halfway grass, the the semi prepare, semi uh, green, if you like. It's interesting, of course, see old Squeaky there with the pin over his shoulder. He got into a little bit of trouble in round three with John Daly for putting it to rest on the ground. He might have been marking the line of the putt. Not now. Nope. So another hole passes by without any result, and now the margin is three to spy Cirrus five holes left. Yes, now comes the twitching hour, not the bewitching hour. It's just a question of whether Seve can keep getting powers and make Price win holes with birdies, or whether Seve makes mistakes and Price is able to capitalise on it. Well, something might well happen here. This morning they both played beautiful tee shots, Price first, and put it all six or seven feet away. Seve played about 10 feet, Seve hold, Price missed. And uh, you see the flag on the left-hand side, right on the edge of the shadows. And that's not the easiest target to pick out from down below. Only two birdies. Seve had one here this morning, and he's had four twos so far today. <laughs> Just playing over three. Here, the flag, the far right hand corner. Hundred and seventy nine yards. A five iron for Sevy. Needs a good one. to the green, almost the perfect distance, just missed the green. Price is using a four iron now. And you can see just a little bit of the shaft poking out above his left hand. Searching out the flag and right over the top of the flag, and another beautiful stroke from Price. What two splendid iron shots he's played here today. Well, three down, four to play, Price. And he's got to hold this. He must hold this. 
and then much can happen over the last certainly over the last couple of holes over the years we've seen them one with par fives price has this fast rhythm but it's a very compact swing straight both players go up and down pretty straight although price when he gets to the top of the back swing sometimes just drops inside there there's a right elbow seems to go down towards the rib cage a little bit as we start down and the club moves over a little bit but basically it's a straight up and down swing a fast rhythm and he gives the appearance of being uh, of using a very tight grip a bit in the uh, mold of Tom Watson and finishes balanced every time. I don't think I've seen him hit one shot where he's been falling about after he's hit the ball. Oh, Caddy there struggling up the hill. I think he could do with a toe. I can remember as a boy at Fernland. I can't remember his name. I think his name was Sir Edward Durant. He had two caddies, one to carry the clubs and another one just to put his hand in the small of his back and just push him along. And if you've not tried it, you try it. It's absolutely wonderful. It's like floating on air. Get one of the children to walk behind you and just put a hand in the small of your back and just don't push you, just keep the pressure there. It's heavenly. If you ever win the pools, I think I shall get someone permanently to just push me round. Must be heavenly. Sir Edward Durant had his clubs for a long time. Well, we saw two twos on this hole. I mean, two twos, and both of them have been uh, got by Ballesteros. He had a two here when he was playing Fred oh, Couples on Friday morning, and a two here this morning. So, uh, that's a little repairing job. <laughs> Fairly straight putt of Seve's. Once you get up this on, on the top level, the back edge of this green falls away towards us from here. So he could putt this either straight or just down the left side, a, a whisker. for his fifth two of the day. But the three's good enough, making price win holes with birdies. Well, if Price ever wanted to hold a putt, he needs one now. Right at the end, I thought it was in a foot from the hole, but it wasn't to be. So four holes left, and Seve three up.
Well, there'll be uh, some nervous reaction, I'm sure, on the tee at uh, 15. There you see the map of it. The bunker, 231 yards, would normally uh, not affect players, but these, some, or one of them, or both of them might even prefer to play an iron club from the tee. Then it does come into play. What you mustn't do is go down the right-hand side because as the trees just about where the stream is, they do come out a little further than that. The pin position is uh, 23 yards up the green and only five yards from the left, which is probably the easiest position it's been in for the entire week. It'll be interesting to see the selection of clubs made on the tee. And there's the big bunker halfway down the fairway. That's the 16th hole in the distance, the fairway bunker and the greenside ones is looking at it from a different angle. And it really is quite a, a sort of, uh, n it's such a narrow fairway, it's claustrophobic almost down there. The spectators in the right and left make it feel even narrower. And I think Ballesteros is going with the iron club, the one iron. He's played this hole so beautifully. He's played a selection of second shots uh, with two irons and three irons, and he's had so many close to the flag. This morning, beautifully played. The ideal line, if you could pass that bunker on the left by about five yards and keep going for another 30 or so. Well, he's gone left of the bunker and continuing left of the bunker. Oh, that'll be cracking down, I think. Could be amongst the spectators over there in the dust. It didn't appear to be cutting or coming back in any shape or form. Inquisition there, what caused that? Getting hot now, hot under the collar. Now, uh, Price, with the metal, I think it's a spoon. I don't think it's a driver. Oh, look at that one. How high it soars. Use the loft of the free wood, and that is perfect. Absolutely spot on. Just see the flag there, just fluttering about. Well, the standard of play, excellent in this match. The approximate score of Ballesteros, something about 10 under par from since he, since he teed off this morning. And there's how they played this hole. 15th and four and a quarter. It's uh, 466 yards, another 10 yards, and it would have been a par five as it was in the old days when it played a little longer. There used to be another bunker down there on the right-hand side. Four birdies, 20 pars, and nothing worse than double bogey, but in match play by that time you've probably been conceded, picked it up, and gone on. Well now, Sevi, who appeared to be going further left than that, he somehow got it over the bunker, into the semi-rough. And even in this cold, moist air, the, the amount of spectators going down there have dried up the footways, and you get an impression of dust. There's the flag position, bottom left, there's plenty of slope on the green to bring the ball towards it. So, Savvy, a little bit of fortune there off the uh, tee shot. He actually uh, hit the ball off to the left, left of the bunker, and uh, bounced in off the gallery. So, uh, certainly the right way to bounce. If he'd bounced the other way, it'd have been either unplayable or virtually out of bounds. Leaves himself a long, a long second shot, but uh, he did this yesterday and played a remarkable shot within uh, eight or nine feet of the pin with a two iron. He's still got about, uh, well, just under 230 yards to go, but uh, this left side really opens the hole up, so uh, all in all, uh, things looking pretty good. Well, here's uh, Ballesteros going into the impact and you'll see as he starts through the shot, the ball is decidedly on its way towards the spectators. There's no question about that. When, it, when he started down there, I imagined we'd start to see it curving away to the right uh, with a bit of a dis deliberate fade, but uh, nothing was going to happen. It just carried on its own sweet way and ever and ever further left. It was now well left of the bunker. It was destined for the footpath, 
it was destined for the ditch but uh, we didn't hear anything and I we keep looking but I don't think we'll see anything popping out however there it is even so hitting someone it must have hit someone quite hard because I think it is it priced to play first Nick Price, a uh, very similar distance to Severiano. He's got a long iron, though. It's going to be something like a three iron into here now. He's going to have to aim it at uh, camera rostrum and let the slope take the ball down right to left. It's uh, not too difficult a shot, actually, today. because There's very little wind now, practically still late afternoon now. This is very important. He's got to get this as close as he can. Well, he made a very good hit at that indeed, and he's gone for the right-hand half of the green. Is it long enough to take the slope? So oh, it's a bit short. Is he going to run on a bit? Well, it's running on a bit, but it isn't running on enough, and uh, he, need, he needed certainly another club. Price uh, and, uh, and a misjudgment of distance. Beautifully struck, did everything, had it on route. Sevi, well, what will he do? Play for the center of the green now. The pressure's been taken off him. He miscued his tee shot. His partner has underclubbed, or his opponent, not his partner. All he really has to do is just bring it down on that tower yonder. He's actually appears to have gone straight at the flag. He's ignored all the advice. Here it comes now. You'll see it taking the contours. It might not stop on the putting surface, but it is nonetheless a very good shot. Coming as it did from Sammy Raff, there was no real way of controlling the ball. He couldn't stop it. He's looking for someone to thank. <laughs> Much gracious. When you come from semi-rough, you know the ball is not going to be quite so controllable. That's a disadvantage. But he's got a long iron here, two or three iron, and here he goes into a beautiful wrist action. It's uh, steeper than most of his shots. And there his hand's beautifully poised. If you drew a line up his left forearm and continue up through his knuckles, that shows you how beautifully square the swing is. Look at the blade of the club parallel to the left forearm. Everything in compact line. Down he comes. You couldn't fault it. Through, under beautiful extension of the arms a lift of the body and you can see the ball just soaring to the target it was an exquisite shot Uh, Bruce Critchley is here with me, and I know that he used to live not far from this green. You know just about every contour, and I think you used to sneak out and uh, practice on it, Bruce. I did, and I've always said that Alex is one of the reasons I'm a, a poor putter, because there's enormous slopes on this green. I was always sort of practicing semicircular putts, and you don't get into them very often. But yes, I used to do that, and bunker shots, and then back up on the, uh, back up on the fairways, I was used to hit a few five arms from the left-hand rough there wasn't much route then I also remember as a very young lad sitting on top of the bunker on the left-hand side and I'd watch the members coming through and uh, if they hit the shots into the trees I just mark a little cross on my map and wait for them to go through and then go in and collect it nothing changes <laughs> Well, I wonder just who I think it must be prized to, to play first. You get a different feeling about putts when, you, when you're when you coming a, a down a green with a big right to left swing. You always get the feeling that it's going to uh, roll out of control and away from you. And Seve coming the other way when it's going to drift off to the left, you feel you could hit it firmer. I, I don't know why that is, but it's just an impression being a right-handed player, I suppose. 
But the swing on this, uh, probably seven or eight feet up to the right-hand side, almost towards the center of our picture, and let it we'll have to drift down. Now, the shadows are lengthening. It's turned into a beautiful autumn afternoon. Might be a little bit sharp, but uh, I don't think the players have noticed that. They've played at a good, healthy pace, or as fast as Seve would let it go. Now, three down. Only three holes after this one. <coughs> He has to be brave, he mustn't be too brave, or it could all finish. If he takes three putts here, it could be a, he could go down four and three. He's going to aim just about at uh, Squeaky's shoes, I would think. Now, watch the turn. He's a quality player. I think that'll be conceded. No, not yet. I thought Savi was bending down to pick it up, but he wasn't. No, the coin goes. Yeah. If Savi should hold this, the final would be over by a margin of four and three. I still don't think that he'll, he'll certainly not have a go at it. Be happy to get it up whole side. Left Nick Price's ball there. A bit of negotiation might take place. But in the friendliest of manners. It's been a very sporting occasion. There's no question about that. In fact, the whole week we've enjoyed good sportsmanship. At least from uh, Billy Andrade, who I thought was a very personable young man. Now, Sebi, who hits the ball up the slope a little bit, uh, aiming left, but can be firm. Whoa. Lovely touch. Well, I wonder if he'll make... Yeah? No, he's going to give him that. Yes, <laughs> you're not going to make a putt. Not going to spoil our day's fun, not ruin another Sunday. So, Nick Price goes to the 16th tee. Three down and three holes left of this official holes. Yes, and he might not have given that putt had he been in the old square, but... He's happily fairly well in charge here, the 16th. One, apparently one of the simplest holes, only 380 yards, widish, or fairways at its widest, level with the bunker. Gently uphill, turning from right to left, an iron off the tee, one, two iron off the tee, and an eight iron is the sort of way the hole is played. The only difficulty is that if you do drive up the right-hand side, it gets difficult to see the bottom of the pin, but the pin today cut center front and unless you're way over on the right, there's nothing to stop you coming in, bouncing short and popping up close to the pit. Now, you might say that uh, Price is three down and three to play, dead and buried, but, well, three, four, four, certainly on the cards and could win all three holes like that. So, so he knows that he's still got some work to do. Now, look at that. Since the turn, every hole halved in par, apart from the 12th, which was halved in birdie fours. He's been slowly strangling his man to death. He hasn't come in with a quick kill that he might have done a year or two back. <coughs> and that's safe. Very short. But it's all right. A bit defensive now. As he said earlier in the year, it's difficult when you're several shots ahead or several holes up to keep attacking. And Price has done very little wrong, just a little sloppy on the outward nine and let uh, Sevy get away from him. And he's played very well this morning.
And they're not applauding up there, because it's down the left-hand side and into that bunker. It certainly seems to get more than its fair share of the balls in there. But unless it's right up in the face, which I don't think it is, there'll be no trouble in getting out and finding the pin. And in fact, not a bad, if it's fairly firm, the sand, it's not a bad surface to come in from with a medium to low iron. And Seve looking very much as though he's on his way to a victory. And, of course, uh, avenging, I think, probably the, maybe the heaviest loss of his career in the second round last year at the hands of Ronan Rafferty. Got beaten 8-6. and six. Largely on account of Rafferty going round in the morning in 62, or an approximate 62, 10 under par, and being 6 up at lunch. But he seems to be extracting the maximum revenge. And, uh, well, there's not much joy there for Price. Even a three might not be good enough. And Nick Price himself laid it pretty well. Very good bunker shot he hit this morning when he changed clubs, I think largely because this ball was very close to its own pitch mark. Now, he hasn't played the hole nearly as well. Hasn't had a three yet. So maybe now is the time to start. Anything more than that, and I think uh, anything more than a three here, and it will be the old handshake. Yes, Price committing a, the cardinal sin of, of putting his tee shot in the bunker and uh, really in the lap of the gods, whether the ball's half plugged, whatever it is, it, it won't be as easy a shot as from the edge of the fairway. And it looks, well, it's lying perfectly cleanly. Maybe just a little bit of ridge of sand behind the ball. Whereas Seve's up on the high ground. And really the one thing Seve mustn't do now is to miss the green on the right and find trouble. Only six paces in from the right-hand side of the green and another couple of paces would take you into the right-hand bunker. You can just see the flag and you can see the main part of the house between the trees. That really is the line to go on. inviting one of the gallery. You want, you want to come play? Cost you a few quid to play with him, I tell you. <laughs> well, he's to play first. And what is that? That's the one. Square-ended club. If it's a square-ended club, probably a seven or maybe even a little six. This hole is 380 yards. We'll have 160 odd yards to the flag, maybe. Oh, nearly pitched in the hole. Just missed the flag stick. Nick Price has seen what he's got to do, and uh, he's been a bit unlucky. His, his ball has come to rest in a ridge made by the rakes, and he's got 142 yards to the to the flag. Probably something like a seven or an eight. Probably an eight iron, I would think. Eight iron, I would think it is. Which, in fact, it is. And he's given it a fair old crap, and it's a great shot. That really is a tremendous shot. From there. Indeed, a great result, Mike. He's only about seven feet or so from the hole. A wonderful shot. He had to be very precise in uh, striking that ball. Caught the ball on the downward blow, on the descending blow, and didn't take uh, too much sand. And the result, very good indeed. Excellent shot from Price. 
So the drama going right through to the end. Another look at it. Now the great thing is here that he's got to strike the ball so cleanly, really. A descending blow, a ridge of sand behind the ball. So if he touches the sand so before the ball, he'll only go half distance. See, the weight goes onto the left side, down. The ball is caught and driven away. A very, a very precise stroke. And he pitched just on the edge of the green. He got a nice bounce forward and then the spin when it was needed. And just past... Uh, pin high, just past level with the pin, six, seven feet or so, as he pitched there at the front of the green and bounced forward, Seve is now repairing his pitch mark, which well, rather fortunately might have clattered into the pin and ricocheted somewhere, but uh, that's where Seve's ball landed there. Uh, of course if Ballesteros holds his putt it's all over. But if he misses and price holes, well, it's down the 17th. Yes, Alex has just remarked on the on the lovely shadows. It's almost like uh, they're really, very really clean. They are indeed, Alex. You're very very observant. <laughs> He's almost artistic, yes, not quite, but those shadows really are very clean cut, almost like the, the silhouette artists that you see in various uh, continental towns sitting there whittling away with bits of black paper, very, very artistic they are. Serious there. Billy almost prostrating himself on the green in an effort to give the old boy the line. And this putt's been known to wiggle about. It, again, it's the ball seems to go left, right, left, right, and speed the most important factor. Putting right back into the setting sun. And as he does so often, Seve having the, the flag attended, the hole attended. As it helps him to line up. Now this for the match. Oh, it swung right across the face of the hole. What a good effort. Well, Seve's got his four, and now Nick Price has a putt to hole to take the game on to the 17th. There you are. Only worth £60,000, that one. Because if he holds it, it doesn't mean to say that he's going to uh, win. Seve still would be very much in the driving seat. Two up, two holes left. Probably about the length of Bernard Langer's putt at Keogh Island. Got it. Oh, he hasn't. It stayed on the left side. I thought he'd done it. It wasn't to be. And a, a splendid exhibition of golf. Some beautiful iron play from Price. Perhaps he didn't hold as many putts as he... I don't think he should have done. Ballesteros holds some, some excellent putts and struck the ball very well indeed. He, he equals Gary Player's record of five victories in this uh, splendid World Match Play Championship. Five victories, a handsome check and a trophy at the end of the season for Seve. Oh, what a good season he's had. Excellent. A feast of good things today. We've seen good driving, good tactical play, some good putting, 
no messy golf at all. Seve winning by three and two. Sammy, we seem to keep meeting on this 16th green. Congratulations yeah. on not only winning today, but on the marvellous golf you've played. Yeah, thank you. I uh, played fantastic. Uh, uh, even that, uh, that I, didn't feel, I didn't feel very well, and uh, I think uh, I didn't make any bogeys uh, for uh, 34 holes, which is uh, something fantastic, especially in match play, which uh, you normally play a little bit more aggressive sometimes, and it's, uh, it's fantastic to win. Uh, I have, uh, I have to say that um, the way uh, I fell on, on, uh, on the first round on Friday, uh, uh, I never was very positive of uh, being in the final because I, uh, I was injury and I was weak and I was uh, feeling bad. But uh, uh, in match play, you have to beat one man and uh, I went uh, one after one and, uh, and uh, somehow I managed to win. <laughs> Well, not only has it been a marvellous day from the golfing point of view, but it also ties you with Gary Player's yeah, record uh, for this event. Well, I was waiting for that uh, final uh, for six years, and uh, finally it came uh, this time, and I uh, I was three down this morning. Uh, I lost uh, three holes on the first five holes this morning, and uh, it didn't look very good. And also Nick uh, was playing fantastic, and uh, I think uh, uh, the only problem he has... Uh, this afternoon was that uh, he didn't make uh, the putts uh, he's supposed to make to, to gain some, uh, some holes back but uh, and I think I, uh, the key point also was that uh, I didn't put him, uh, I put a lot of pressure on him I didn't make any mistakes and I was by the stick uh, most of the day well it's been a long week an excellent yeah. final we've all enjoyed yeah. watching it immensely Sebi many congratulations thank you very much Clive thank you yes well deserved Victory, two very good gladiators there. The scores, morning and afternoon. Oh, this afternoon scoring there. You see Sevi every hole in three and four, and just a couple of errors from Price, third and the ninth. Bad tee shot at the ninth, and just went through the back of the third, and it cost him uh, a shot from the edge of the green. And I'm with Nick Price, and Nick, you played ever so well today. I mean, there must be a certain amount of disappointment when you're round in yeah. 66 this morning and the match all square, you, you really hardly hit a well, bad shot. Well, I was shot, really but... disappointed because, you know, I, I wanted us to go down 18, you know. I, I was trying so hard for us to get a really close match, and uh, I just couldn't make any putts, you know. I, uh, I've had a bit of a problem recently, and uh, when I'm not making any putts, I start putting a little more pressure on myself, and it seems to compound itself. So, uh, But I was really happy with the way I played, you know. I've hit the ball well for uh, all four days, and... Uh, you know, uh, I just keep have to work, keep working on my putting. And I think one of the difficult things too is when you're playing someone like Seve, who was in a relentless mood yeah. today. You know, you're 66. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was vintage Seve. I think we're starting to see him coming back now. You know, uh, this putter that he's using now has given him so much more confidence, and you know, he's just. Uh, he, He's hitting the ball really well. I mean, his driving is probably uh, not the strongest part of his game right now, but everything else. He never gave me an opportunity today, and uh, especially this afternoon, if he had made a bogey or missed a, a shot somewhere, I might have been able to sneak in, but uh, I had to make birdies, and I knew it. I knew at the beginning of the day that, you know, we weren't going to sort of uh, win holes with pars, and, uh, but uh, that's one of those things. Nick, I can only say congratulations. It was great to watch you Thanks. play today, and you'd have beaten a lot of other men. Thanks, Clive. I had a lot of fun. Thank you.